Hi, I'm Stephen Cronin. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, welcome to another watercolour painting demonstration. And this is a simple photograph I took whilst in Sutton Park last month. But before we start, just a quick whiz through the materials. Colours ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, glitter and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. Got the large Run Rance and Hake brush and 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper. All the links are in the description. So one last quick look at the photograph and then I'll get started. So I'm going to start with a big, the big height brush and this is just clean water going all over the paper evenly and the main reason for that is to stop it crinkling. You know when you use watercolour paper, especially when it's too thin and it was all crinkly and, uh, and horrible. Just wet it all over and that'll, that'll stop all of that. That was a bit of raw sienna. This is a bit of lemon yellow I've added to it. Um, and this is just to give a sort of general green foliage sort of background feel to the whole thing. I'll uh, do a bit of dry brush work to create some actual leaves. Um, that just gives a bit of a flavour. I'll tell you what I did forget to do. I didn't bring the ultramarine, did I, for the uh, sky? I'll leave that out for today. I'm going to worry about that now. Um, there's no blue in the sky anyway, so I'm going to worry about it. Um, what I am going to do is a bit of raw sienna, a bit more of that lemon yellow, um, a bit of ultramarine. Some, just a general mass around the back, just changing it just slightly, a bit of ultramarine and then there's going to be a path that's going to stop about there so I'm going to worry about that, leaving a bit of a gap then, and a, somewhere like that, just using the corner of the brush Then I'm going to switch to the little rigger brush and put in some distant tree trunks. So a bit of brown, a bit of blue, a bit of whatever. In fact, it's a good idea to use the colours that you've done for the, the sky in the background because it just helps push it right back into the distance. So these. These are just the most distant trees and trunks and things going in. And I'll just paint over these later, but for now, I just want something in there that looks as if it's really far away. So I'll come over to the middle. I've only come into that middle area right now, because I know like most of the paint's gone off the brush, so I know I can go over this centre section and it's going to remain quite clear. There's hardly anything left. The brush is almost dry now. The water's gone, the paint's gone. Then, if you press down hard, you get some thicker, thicker lines that I look like slightly closer trees. And what I might do just a few little branches and twigs and things going. Not being very deliberate, just doing them sort of en masse, doing all sorts of directions up and down, left, right. So that's the uh, the most distant things in. Looking at the paint, the um, picture. What I might do, I'll stick with these same two colours, well three colours: raw sienna, lemon yellow, a bit of ultramarine as well. And I'm going to work out exactly where does this land. Start so you've got the distant one, then it's that land is somewhere like that. And that goes up there, a bit of raw sienna on the bush just to change it, alter it a bit. And that goes somewhere around there, like that. Now, this stuff on the uh, I can't do this yet because it's sort of covered with a big foreground bush, 
But what I can do next, if I go into a bit of burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine, <coughs> I always like to do them in three layers. So that was the most distant layer. Now we've got the sort of the middle layer of trees. So what I do is use the hake for this. And again, they're quite, quite, I was going to say quite faint, but they're fairly strong. I mean, they're, they're stronger than the, so we need that a bit thicker than not, because these are even thinner than the, uh, what's behind it. So obviously if they're a bit closer, they need to be a bit, bit thicker. So that's, that's a bit too symmetrical. So I've done some crossing over just to make it look a bit more natural so they're not all in parallel straight lines. So once I've got the main body in, the main trunk, I can then just put in a few little twigs and branches here and there with the, uh, the rigger brush. Not being very deliberate again, just putting them in en masse. Remember, we can always go over this afterwards with the with a dry brush to create some some green foliage. That'll do all I need for now. And I'm going to do the other side. A few more on this side. One leaning this way. I'll do one leaning the other way. There, one down there. This is the, like I say, the middle lot of trees. Back to the rigger brush. A few more twigs and branches coming off. A few going up, a few going down. And then, once all these are on, I then do the thick foreground ones, the closest ones to us. So that's those ones. So what I might do now is clean the brush. You see the paper stretch is coming away from the board, so I can get my fingers in behind it now. So I'm just going to unclip it on this right hand side, pull it tight against this plywood. I'll just use a 9mm piece of plywood, cut to size. Just got it from B&Q. Wasn't too expensive. Um, and I think I got the easel from uh, Costco. You know, on special offer, I think it was about 30 quid-ish. I can't remember, to be honest with you, about five or six years ago now I bought this thing. It's, uh, it's that old, it's like the old one at all. It's all rattling all over the place, but I tend to stick with what I know. I'm not really a massive on experimenting. So what I'm doing now, I'm just popping in just a bit of this land, so we'll see which how the land lies. I don't want to do it too dark because I'm going to put some shadows on it. And I want the shadows to stand out. So the, the lighter I do this grain, the uh, the stronger the shadows will appear. So if I just get a bit of bit of red, a bit of blue. Let's just try to pull in a little. There's the path. See so how did it quick? Just a quick sweep. See how it breaks, so it doesn't paint all over. It has a bit of texture. Makes it look nice. And then on this side, this right hand side, you've got a whole load of brambles and undergrowth. So starting with the lighter colours, a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of raw sienna, you know, I'm just adding a bit of ultramarine to the mix. Right. 
clean the brush, so I'm going to be back, back to grey. I put a bit too much burnt umber on there than I, than I was expecting. Yeah. Bit of lemon yellow, paints grey. And here you just thought if you want, I'll just use a piece of card. I'm just going to put in a few bits of grasses and brambles and things. And I'll always put a few more in with the rigid if you want, a bit of brown, a bit of blue. That's just a mass of something or other. Once that's dry, I'll just put a bit more on, a few darker shadows maybe. Um, but for now, I'll, tell you what I'll do, I'll just give it a quick, quick dry. Let's just squeeze the water out of this brush. And I'm just going to stuff it up. I'm just going to put a little bit of foliage on before we do the final. The final foreground trees. So I've just cleaned it, scuffed it up, just dipped in a bit of raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow. And I'm just putting in a bit of foliage here and there. Because the brush is dry, the brush really needs to be dry for this because otherwise you're just blocking, just paint over everything you've just done. Bit of, bit of ultramarine in there, just to darken it up a little bit. Get a bit of variation in the in the foliage colour, and then what I'll do, I'll put the uh, the closest, the third layer of trunks in. So all I've done, I've just dipped the uh, I've just dipped the corner of the um, the brush in to bring the hairs all back together. So now I've got a nice, nice uh, sort of chisel edge again. If you can see that. And what I'm going to do a bit of brown, a bit of blue. I'm putting in the uh, big strong foreground ones now. You can see, you can see how these really go in a lot stronger. Brings these to the foreground and pushes everything back into the distance. And yeah, I'm just trying to vary the uh, the distance they are from us. I don't want them all, you know, in a straight line. So this one's going to be a bit closer, so that means it's going to be further down the page. Also, if you've got any nice little bits that you like in the full, in the in the, in the middle or distance, don't paint over them after you've spent all that time creating a, you know some nice effects. So this one's going to be a bit further away. That's just a little bit higher up. And again, that one's further away. Again, this one's doing on a slight angle. I can always put a few in on the other side. So that's what I'm, what I'm giving up there. Like that. Just popping up over the top of those bushes. I've just dipped the very corner of the brush into the water again. Just to loosen everything up. The paint was getting a bit dry. A bit of brown, a bit of blue. Just a simple dark browny colour just to represent these tree trunks. So there's one in the photograph that goes across there like that. There's the summit doing something up like that. There's the summit, something there going across there. Right, so, with all that in, what I want to do now is switch back to the Riga brush, bit of brown, bit of blue, and just put a few.
twigs and branches are. A bit more, a bit more pines. A bit more water. these twigs, twigs and things growing and again what I'll do I'll once it's all in I'll just do put a bit more foliage in a bit more dry brush work you see now a very light touch now for this the most most distant one you see what needs just coming over into that really light area just look like fine branches just coming down So again, just dipping the brush into the walls just to loosen it all up. And we've got a few more branches coming down over there. The big ones off the uh, just from the some trunks that, that are out of shot. They're coming down there like that. And then, so it's back to the DK brush again, clean it, squeezing all the water out of it like that. I can always press it against the tea towel just to take some more out. Just scuff it up like that. You're going to do much damage to it. Just so that the airs are going all over the place. And then I'm just going to dip it into the raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow. Don't need too much because there's already a lot of foliage on in those background ones. What I might do just to make it stand out a little bit more, a bit of green, add a bit of Payne's grey, just try and get a really strong dark green. Otherwise, it's all just going to blend in with those uh, background greens. You see how strong that is? That's just again looks like it's in the foreground now, pushing everything else right the way back. So that's all that's on there. I'm just going to just a bit of darken this a little bit. Something else growing there. I'm just going to get a bit of a bit of light, light red. Something else growing there. Right, I'm going to put some shadows in now. I think. So, all I've done. I haven't even cleaned the brush. Just dips it. Dip the corner into the water. I'm going to have a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue. It's going to be a shadowy colour. It's not the most scientific way of doing it, but my shadowy colour is going to look something like that anyway, so I ain't too worried about it. And then you've got to sort of get that balance between how strong do you want your shadows. So you can always test it in the corner if you want. Um, so I'm just going to go straight in. I'm going to say that the if we take our sort of light source about halfway up from the horizon so I'm going to say it's there so I'm just going to follow that line follow that line and then pop these shadows in so that's up there like that that's coming down there like that and again they're not going in perfectly straight lines because they follow the contours of the land so they go up and down and up and down 
paint on the brush. And again, we'll just follow in these. Just at one, so I don't want that to be too thick. I certainly don't want it any thicker than what the, the, the tree trunk is. Just a, some light stuff up there. Move on to these other ones, and obviously we've got this big, actually we've got this big bush in the way, haven't we? So we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna see much in terms of shadow. Uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna get some dark bits here and there amongst it. Right? Some dark down there. And obviously this. Bit of shadow down the bottom, I think. That's all I'm going to do for that. Um, how's that? Yeah. yeah, I just paused it for a sec just to go and have a look from the back of the room. Um, it looks it's looking a bit bare, so I, I think just need to bring this this uh, sort of bush just over a little bit more. Maybe a bit more green amongst the trees there. A few more, I don't know, summit in this foreground. Um, so anyway, let's clean the brush. Let's just bring this over slightly more. So I'm just going back into the green. Get a ultramarine. I just want to over something like that. Um, it needs some coming out of it, I think. I need a few little twigs or something coming out of there. Let's just pop something like that. Does that look any better? I don't know. Clean the brush. Mm -hmm. It needs a little bit more raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow, a bit more green or some somewhere or other. Bit of rain there. Looks like a load of mud or something in this foreground. Let's just. I don't know. I don't think that's added a fat lot to it, to be honest with you. Um, let's just clean the brush and let's just mix that in a little bit and see what it looks like. I think that looks a little bit better, just, just mixed in. I'm doing. I'm just using a damp brush just to just to mix it all together a little bit. Does that look any better? I'm just going to pause it a second and have a look. Well, it looks slightly better. Um, I'll just flick somebody in there. Rose. 
What he definitely needs is a little, little man walking his dog. Oh, I've just got a bit of, bit of red, bit of blue. Um, uh, I'll put that right, it's like banging the way now, isn't it? So I'm just going to need to do a Slightly, and then just about. No, I ain't going that side. Just about to see his dog next to him, and only just mine. And then, so, and then don't forget the shadow again. Uh, this is coming sort of this, this way. Following that right. And then sort of little bits and pieces there. So that um, a big thick dollar for paint on your brush. Uh, I think it's really good. Anyway, let's put a mount on it and see what it looks like. So this is the finished painting in its main. So if we compare it to the photograph. First thing I've done is sort of open out the central part to try and create some light coming in into the scene. Um, I did. I forgot to put the the ultramarine, but I think I think it's actually better without the ultramarine. I don't think it's lost anything. I think it's added something to it. So, as usual, I tried to put the the trees in three three sort of layers of depth. So you can just about see the faintest ones there I put in with the rigger brush. Very, very faint, very light in tone. A um, few more on the other side, see them there just peeking between the other trees, right in the distance. Putting in when the paper's still wet, and it helps push them right back far. Then I put in, switch to the height brush, put in a few more sort of the, the, the sort of middle, middle layer ones. Um, these are a bit, little bit stronger than those lighter tone ones. Again, just helping with the depth. And then finally, the ones in the foreground, just put on big, thick, strong paints just to complete that sort of um, illusion of depth running straight through to our sort of distant figure walking his dog. If you remember at the start, I just brushed in a few, uh, a bit of light, light, uh, light yellow and light green just to sort of create that sort of mass of, of foliage. Like here, for instance, in the distance, it just just creates that sort of um, just a simple way of of um, suggesting foliage. Like see see here, see like the, the the profile line there. I mean, there's there's no detail whatsoever in there. It just looks like a, a load of trees just fading away into the distance. 